G'day, this is Alex Bainbridge here from Greenleft. Uh, I am here with Tim Gooden. He's the retired secretary of the Geelong Trades Hall Council and a long-time trade unionist more than 40 years in various industries. Now, we're here to talk about the role of trade unions in this issue of uh, Israel's genocide against the people of Gaza and Palestine more broadly, and in particular, the role that, you know, how and what should trade unions be doing more to support uh, the campaign for justice in this region. I did begin by asking Tim to talk about the context of the Australian Labor government's uh, complicity in, the, in, in Israel's genocide against the people of Gaza. The situation that other countries are taking, having a look at particularly what's going on in the Middle East at the moment, like South Africa, um, is that there's a genocide being perpetrated and essentially we're a part of that, both in terms of military technology, complicity in, you know, of political support, um, but in real support in terms of military assistance. Now this is only going to continue to grow while we remain silent. And that's why I'm talking to you today. Yeah. The trade union movement undoubtedly is the largest as small as it is in terms of membership, but it's still the largest organisation in Australia today that can reach out to the working class and mobilise the working class against um, Australian contemporary government uh, policy. And at the moment, it's one track to war um, and the Labor government is part of that. In Geelong, we've got Richard Miles, who's our Defence Minister and openly supporting of Israel's actions um, against the 30,000 people that have been slaughtered so far, some 8,000 of those children, um, we can't continue to remain silent. Mm. Now, there's some good trade unionists that have been turning up to rallies. <coughs> um, the MUA has been doing their bit from an early day. Um, the ACTU even put out a statement in the first week or two which wasn't a bad statement, but since then they've done bugger all. Um, my union, the CFMEU, uh, has been going out to jobs and trying to get the Palestinian flag flown, which is not easy. They've had to have arguments on site with people. Um, and to, to, to win that, to win that, because the majority of the working class, and our members included, uh, have grown up with, the, the Murdoch media and the narrative perpetrated by the Australian government, our national interests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And their first reaction is, oh, look, Hamas brought this upon themselves, the Palestinian, this is a fight that's been going on for a long time, it's got nothing to do with us. Fuck them, really. Um, now, as trade union leaders, we, we know that that's not the case. And, but we're going to have to win over and challenge that narrative and win over our members. Now, that's going to require articles in our newspapers, workplace visits, our actual secretaries going to the rallies. It's not good enough that we assign a union organiser to deal with the most progressive elements of our membership and to take the, the, the pressure off the steam vessel, if you like, um, while still kowtowing to our brothers and sisters in the ARP that we're not challenging the role of Israel because it'll rock the boat. Mm. I mean, pe people are dying. Mm. Mm. And we have to decide now the role of the trade union movement in this. Is it going to be for peace? Is it going to be for protecting the interest of workers who will ultimately die on both sides? Uh, or are we going to start standing up against the war drive in the Ukraine, what's happening in the Middle East now, and work out which side we're on? You can't continue to say, oh, the Australian government's operating in our national interest, blah, 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 it's humanitarian aid, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, we have to call a spade a spade. Uh, people are getting slaughtered, and trade unionists particularly our secretaries, of all, white collar, blue collar, etc., need to come out and lead our membership. And it's going to be hard. Mm. It's going to be hard because for years, for years our membership have been told, oh, these ragheads, these terrorists, uh, yeah, they're nothing but trouble. You know, the, um, 
And, and the Labor Party's been part of that narrative. They don't necessarily say that, but they may as well. Um, and we're going to have to try and turn that around. Just on the weekend, uh, CFMEU leader Christy Kane has just uh, spoken at the rally in Perth and reiterated his call on the ACTU to take stronger action. Uh, can you uh, make some comments about that? Christy's one of the few that have come out. Luke Hilakari is, is another one. Um, they've come out on the front foot and called a spade a spade. Uh, they can see what's coming. They can see the Australian working class being forced to fall into step behind our national interests, i.e. the bourgeoisie and the, and the Australian government in whatever they do. Now, we've been there in our lifetime. This is not anything new. Right? Christie's not afraid to upset the apple cart. That's what we need everybody else to do. We can't remain silent while this is happening. We can't pretend this is not an Australian issue. We can't pretend that this is not a Victorian issue. Mm. Uh, we need all state, local and federal politicians to come out and say something, to take a side. Um, because if we don't, we're going to be complicit in whatever the outcome is. And we're going to be contribute, our silence will contribute to that. Now, it's, it's not a simple process. I know that. And we may lose some members out of it. They may say, ah, oh, fuck, you know, you're supporting the, the Hamas, but we're resigning. You know? Well, that's a path that we have to work through. We can't hide behind that and go, oh, we might lose a few members. Fuck, we've been losing members for years. The bosses have been closing up jobs. Uh, we've missed some, missed some opportunities. We've been losing from members for years. Uh, this is a principal thing that we can win over more members if we put our mind to it and work towards it. Our members, most, a lot of our members, I've, I've been. I've been to eight out of the last 12 rallies in Melbourne and we've got members there that are turning up with their community and with their churches, etc. But they're not turning up in union colours. You know, they're not turning up and following a union banner or a union flag because you know, they're not there. You know, let's take that opportunity and build solidarity with those communities and say, yeah, peace is our priority, prosperity for workers, no wars. Uh, let's, let's not be silent and fall into step with the, the RLP party position. Mm -hmm. Let's put ourselves on the line, get out there, talk to members, get them to come along. Like they're not gonna come along if you're not turning up. If you're the secretary of the union, and you're not at the rally, you can't just put out a fucking email and say, oh, get along to this, it'll be good. You need to put out an email and say, I'm going to be there, come and stand with me. Well, that is what will have an impact. Yep. And you need to fight it out. I mean, the world's at war and people are getting slaughtered. Workers are getting slaughtered. And we've got people worrying about how they're going to organise the next dinner for May, May, Day, May Day or something, you know, like, fuck. Just in the last day or so, Penny Wong has embarked on a visit to the region. She's talking about a quote-unquote sustainable ceasefire and she's obviously trying to make it look like Australia is sympathetic to the, to the Palestinians while at the same time not wanting to uh, criticise Israel too harshly. Can you make some comments about that? Uh, the, the official line from the government has been that Israel has a right to defend itself. We're not commenting on anything else, um, i.e. same as America. Go right ahead, slaughter as many as you want. Um, the rallies in Australia and around the world, you've got to bear in mind that this is the, the largest mass movement of a continuous period worldwide in human history. You can't ignore that. In every single country around the world today, there are millions of people every week for the last, it's now 100 days, last three months, campaigning against this. The Australian government's been forced into softening their line. Um, they haven't really changed their position. 
They're not calling for a ceasefire. They're saying we're hoping that there will be a sustainable ceasefire. Well, of course there's going to be a fucking sustainable ceasefire when everyone's dead and they run out of bullets. But what we want them to say now to the Israeli government is, hey, pull your head in, you're doing the wrong thing. Back off. Stop slaughtering people. Right? Call the Israeli ambassador in. Change their position. Back the South Africans in the High Court and say, this is genocide. That's what we want the Australian, that's what we want Penny to say. Right? To go over there and say, this is shit. We're not going to support this anymore. We're no longer going to give you money to do illegal settlements. We're no longer going to subsidise all the defence industry that uses Israeli technology and lines the pockets of the Israeli government. That's what we're not, unless you pull your head in and start coming to some sort of peaceful arrangement. Uh, at the end of that, I've been there. I was, I was in Palestine in August. Yeah, yeah, look, that's actually just the next question I was going to ask you. They could, it's a great place. They could easily have a secular society based on tourism, technology. It's right on the eastern Mediterranean. It's the gateway to the Middle East. Everybody grew up with the stories of Bethlehem and Nazareth. And you know, e e even if you're an atheist, you'd go there as, as a tourist. But not while it's fucking like this. Not while the Israeli public service and security guards treat tourists and Christians like shit, let alone the Bedouins and the, and the Palestinians. It's, it's, you can feel the air being cut with a knife as soon as you get off the plane. This is a hard country. And it's been made that way for the last 75 years. It wasn't like that before. It was a peaceful country, everyone lived together. Sure, it was under Ottoman control for, for 300 years. The Australians went there, um, joined the Imperial armies and knocked everyone off and the charge of Besheva and woo -hoo, you know, and, um, and then the English gave it to the Zionists. And since then it's been shit. Absolutely shit for everybody including the Israelis that were born there and lived there and moved there. You know, it's not a great setup. So you were in the West Bank last year. Uh, so you've seen firsthand um, you know, some of the context, some of the situation before the October 7 events of last year. Can you please explain what you think Australian workers need to know about the actual reality of life on the ground in Palestine? It was like, it was, it was like an open air prison. You go to church and the security forces are pointing guns at you. You walk down the street and try and find a pub. The security forces are harassing you. What are you doing? The whole time, it's like, it's just like misery. T today, if there was, and it wouldn't happen because we're a first world country, and, but if there was an attack, um, a, a terrible, slaughter, people got shot and killed, etc. civilians. Um, and then the people who perpetrated that retreated to the Gold Coast or Geelong or whatever. And the Australian government went, right, they're nothing but human animals. We're going to go in and bomb them. And they just bombed the shit out of the, the Gold Coast, just killing everybody on the Gold Coast to get at the people who perpetrated a terrible act. Uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's what's going on at the moment. Uh, these were lovely cities, lovely people, great food, great country, etc. Um, and they're not, they're, they're not trying to build an inclusive society. Mm. Uh, Israel doesn't want the Palestinians there. That's pretty clear from the last 75 years. Uh, 1948, they tried, drove out a heap. They've been killing and driving out as many as they can since then every decade. They didn't really want the tourists there. And I can tell you that from first-hand experience. Or the Christians. Uh, for some reason or other, they just want their own piece of the desert. Um, and that's it. It's pretty clear that the US 
uh, taken this opportunity and have so ever since the English handed it over as funding their bridgehead into controlling the whole of the Middle East, uh, particularly the oil. Mm. And I'm pretty sure when the oil runs out that the Yanks will pull the pin and they won't give a fuck. But in the meantime, the Australian government and our media and encouraging our workers to take the position, well, this is OK. Uh, and it can't be OK, because if we let the world do this to them, well, then it's OK to do it to us. And how can you live with yourself? Particularly if you're a leader of workers and you don't come out and have this discussion. Mm. Right? Christy, Luke Hilakari, others are trying to do it, but it's not enough. There's people on big bucks. I'll tell you now, Sally, Michelle, the nurses' union, the teachers' union, the SDA, people that have got big influences with workers and can reach a lot of workers, now need, this is the time to stand up. And if we don't, um, what are you fucking doing? Mm. Trying to win some pay increases? Oh, good on you. Uh, if, if that's your calling in life, well, it's a pretty sad state of affairs for the working class. Okay, well, that's probably a good place to finish. Thank you very much for your time, Tim. Uh, thanks for joining us today. And thanks also for you to, for joining us today. Um, we would like to obviously uh, continue building this campaign. We want to extend our solidarity for the people of Gaza and the people of Palestine more broadly. There are rallies happening every week in all of the big cities and hopefully even lots of smaller places as well. If there, if there isn't a rally happening in your place, maybe you can organise one. Um, uh, if you do like the work that we here at Green Left do, please become a supporter. It is the best way to both receive our content and also to, uh, to show support for the work that we do. Uh, there's a link in the description for how you can, how you can do that. Um, also, without spending a single cent, you can share this video or this podcast, however you're receiving this content. Please help us spread the word. Please help us build the movement. And until next time, we'll see you in the streets.